Hello everyone, I'm Elijah Henderson with Cryptid Studies Institute. In just a short amount of time, it will once again be Halloween. Halloween has a history steeped in witchcraft and occult worship practices. A lot of the traditions we see today actually go back to the ancient druids and their pagan beliefs. But this video isn't to discuss the historical background of Halloween and its customs, but rather a supposed real-life werewolf who was executed for the serial bloodshed of men, women, and children. That individual was one Peter Stube, who was executed on October 31st in the year 1589 in the town of Bedburg near the city of Cologne in Germany. From his youth up into his adult years, Peter Stube was greatly influenced and immersed into the black arts. From the age of 12 unto the day that Peter died, he was involved in sorcery in the occult. And as the story goes, Peter, being of an evil heart and inclined to the shedding of blood and inflicting cruelty upon people, entreated the devil that at his pleasure he could unleash his hatred and desire for violence upon men, women, and children in the form of some wild beast. The devil granted his request and gave him a magic girdle or belt that gave him the ability to change his likeness into that of a wolf. It was through this belt that he took countless lives across Bedburg, Germany, and caused a widespread epidemic of terror throughout the town. Through power of this satanic belt, he could rape and pillage to his heart's content and still be anonymous to the crimes that he had committed. Enemies and those he generally disliked were among those slaughtered when he would encounter them, wandering about the city or in distant fields away from the public eye. It is said that he was even saluted by those whose friends and children he had murdered, because nobody in Bedburg suspected Peter of such crimes. Women throughout the town that caught his evil eye were followed out of the city and lured away into privacy where he would ravish them and then kill them in the form of the wolf. This happened on numerous occasions with numerous women. Multiple hunting parties were organized to hunt down and kill the beast that was plaguing the countryside. One particular event, mastiffs and other dogs were brought out to find this wolf. At some point into the hunt, it was sighted and straight away the dogs were released upon Peter. Being in a position where even in his wolfish form he could not have outrun these dogs, he ran and removed his enchanted belt and changed back into the form of Peter Stube. Unbeknownst to him, though, he was spotted by those same hunters who had been watching the wolf. He was seen in the very same place that the wolf had just been. This aroused suspicion, and Peter was brought back to the magistrates of the town. He was placed in the racks, and fearing torture, he came clean of all of his crimes his sorceries and his murders that carried out in his wolfish form. On October 31st, 1589, Peter Stube was executed for his murderous activities as well as his satanic dabblings. He was tied to a large wheel, and with red-hot pincers, his flesh was peeled away from his body, his legs and arms were broken with a large wooden axe or hatchet, finally his head was cut from his body, and his carcass was consigned to the flames. We have no way of knowing whether or not this story is true, but it is very interesting that even as far back as 1589, there were stories of men transforming into wolves. Even today in our modern age, people report seeing large wolf-like creatures running on either two or four legs in our forests and national parks, and the sightings are limitless, and multiple deaths have been attributed to these werewolfish creatures. But until next time, I'm Elijah Henderson with Cryptid Studies Institute. If you have the time, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Cryptid Studies Institute. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, check out our website, cryptidstudiesinstitute.com, and give a listen to our radio show on blogtalkradio.com. And if you've had an encounter with a Sasquatch, a dogman, a werewolfish type creature, a skinwalker, or even something of a more supernatural nature and you'd like to share with us, please let us know because we'd love to hear it. If you'd like to be a guest on our radio show, message us and we'll try to make that happen. But until next time, take care.